Welcome to Season 2 of Let's Break Up, Toxic Workplace Stories. Join hosts Nicola and Gina as they tackle workplace toxicity head-on. Real-life stories, well-being, and standing against toxicity await you. Let's break up with toxic workplaces and create a revolution of positivity together. As a disclaimer, Nicola and Gina's opinions are solely their own and don't represent professional advice. It's just their perspective, so form your own conclusions. Heads up! This podcast may contain adult content and explicit language. So let's dive in and break up with toxic workplaces. Hello. So funny story. Let's hear it. You realize these are recorded, right? Yeah. Okay. You realize on the last one you showed me your boobs. (laughs) I forgot. (laughs) I don't okay. care. I mean, I I trust you. I know you're not gonna like plaster it all over the no, internet. Like, you couldn't really. I mean, it was just like the underside, the under boob. It wasn't terrible. It was the whole thing. Girl, I don't even consider them mine because they're implants. Girl, it was the whole. They're ginormous the- and they're stupid, and I'm getting them made smaller. <laughs> yeah, not a fan. Okay, so let's pretend this is the first time talking after we've been away from each other for it kind of is how long have we been away from each other for now like like we had a couple it's been at least two months two months it's too much (laughs) two months too much so yes I have to do like my because I haven't we haven't really podcasted like formally recently no we've been we had like one or people we, we had like one or two really quick ones and then we were just like okay gotta go bye um I couldn't even do the intro to that sad one with Dr. Jody no I was like driving from Florida to New York so um it's been it's been a ride so I feel like I missed everything I feel very yeah. out of the the Nicola loop out of the loop yeah well, well how have you how has your how ha, look, even i i mean i have we're both stress. dumb we're out of practice <laughs> um but, but, how was your two months off well i wasn't off from everything obviously just two months off from podcasting um so i drove obviously i drove here from i'm in new york still i'm going back like the 12th i'm starting the journey back um so I was up here in New York with my daughter and it's been nice, but like, we're both really ready to come home. Mm. Like we need our own house, our own things, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. So yeah, but she's grown so much, like her vocabulary is so good and she's become like a social butterfly. So Aww. anytime we go to the pool, she's like, I want to go say hi to my friends. And they're like all new people. She, everyone's her friend. It's the cutest. She's the that. opposite of me. I'm like, I'm like, I don't like anyone. No new friends. And she's like, everyone's my friend. That's adorable though. Love I know. That. So what did you, what have you been up to? Well, I, I, I did not get a break from podcasting. <laughs> you didn't? Had, no, of course I didn't because we still had to have mini swords. Oh, I and... know. I didn't even know that you were doing that until you were doing it. Yeah, we, and then also- Can we talk about it? episodes that we had um yeah we had to do that we had to do that that's true yeah also I just want to like put a disclaimer on like towards the end of our podcasting on season one I I became severely depressed so that's kind of like a little not having anything to do with the podcast nothing like that at all it was just I made you depressed no you were probably like the one thing that kept me going but um so I don't even like part of the end of season one was a little bit of a blur because I was just like oh god I'm still alive every day yeah yeah it was rough but anyway so go back to you what did what what did you do besides not getting time off from the podcast oh I've gone back to school again so I'm back at school now I am crazy I'm actually quite enjoying the papers at the moment just not sad you're writing them on the right topic this time apparently barely (laughs) Oh, Jesus Christ. Um, <laughs> honestly, if I do not get an A for this, please just have me fired at this point because no. this is my wheelhouse. Like I'm doing health and safety papers. So I'm just like, please, if I don't, what is the point of my life? Listen, as one of my friends says, every day's a school day. 
So every, maybe you'll every learn. day is a school day. Um, I've been spending a lot of time with my boyfriend. I know this is like the biggest thing ever with my boyfriend. He's so cute. <laughs> I'm so glad that you decided after that whole like um disrupt New Zealand, wasn't it? Or that thing that you spoke at. Yeah. Um, that you were like, I really just wanted to see him. And I was like, that's great. Mm. It is. It's good. It's good shit. Mm. We're so cute. Are you um, guys like in love and stuff? Yes. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm still dealing with my same old. Yeah, it's okay though. You can do better than this. If I could do better, you could do better. No, no, he he um he uh filed for divorce. Didn't I tell you that? Oh my god, I'm so excited. This oh my god, it's happening. I didn't tell you that. It's happening. He filed, it's gonna be finalized. Like you have to put it in the system. I don't know what they have to do, but it'll be finalized by end of this year. Oh my god. Yeah. This is huge. I know. Oh my god! I I'm know, so, and I, and so he happy. asked me what kind of engagement ring I want, and I. Said, ah! <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying it's gonna happen, but this is where it is right now. And ah! he apologized <laughs> for like being such a turd to me and my daughter, and he's been kind of like making up for it ever since. So oh. I, I haven't completely forgiven him, and I haven't said one thing or the other but it's go let's just say it's now going in a, a direction that I can get behind before I could not get behind it's it a positive trajectory there we go so both of our love lives are getting a little bit better look I'm not sad about this no maybe card zb was right maybe card zb was right I okay mean... so you have a fabulous new bf and you guys are all in love and shit and so what else happened um work 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 yeah. I have a fabulous team at work I have I'm very lucky to be working in an industry that is just so compassionate um and it's okay like it's okay good and you're not feeling stressed out like um, previously I don't feel I don't feel like I was anywhere near what last year was right like I feel far less um I feel far less more I, like far less miserable. I'm feeling a lot more settled and a lot more grounded. You seem a lot more settled and grounded. So I'm glad to hear that. Mm. But very curious to know more about what we are going to talk about for our now season two. So you want to go first? Do you want to uh, make the announcement? Which one? There's an announcement? I don't do you I have an announcement? I don't, I, I've got barely an announcement. So, well, I guess what we kind of piggybacking on what we already said at the end of season one, like we're surprised, like we've gotten this far so quickly and we're so grateful and thankful for both negative and positive reviews. It doesn't matter. Review us. Sometimes what you say, even if we make fun of you is, <laughs> is probably accurate. We just like <laughs> to make fun at our own toxicity. Um, you know, because what can you do if not be self-reflective and laugh about shit, right? So exactly, and we we could take feedback on board. Yes, we might make fun of you at first, but then we'll be like, no, that person was probably right. So, um, anyway, so I think the biggest thing we're we're gonna say is we're trying to be a little bit more concise with our interviews this year, so that or this season, I should say, so that we don't kind of get waylaid into too many like side topics. Although I kind of feel like that's kind of what makes us us. So we're gonna try to balance it better. Let's say that, right? Yeah, we're gonna balance. We're gonna balance out the topics a little more. Um, we do have some really cool interviews locked and loaded already that will be published for the first, I think, five weeks. Um, yeah, looking... so we already have our first couple episodes for season two ready to go. And yeah. Nicola had a really awesome idea and we're going to kind of run with it. And I think that's more of the announcement. So why don't you yeah. tell everyone? So we're, we're going to do some investigative journalism. Um, but we're going to be a please. I, I we're, we're going to use investigative journalism very loosely. <laughs> it's such a loose. 
<laughs> it's a broad <laughs> term. Like Don't topic. expect to come on here and find like us being like crime junkies or morbid <laughs> or any of those like true or like Dateline. Everyone loves a good Dateline. Don't oh, expect that from us. Please, we're gonna do you our love best. Some Dateline, but Who we're doesn't? gonna try. We're gonna try a couple of different things, right? We're gonna try and and kind of step out the box a little bit and we are actually going to research some toxic workplaces so we've put some time in to kind of make a list of the places that we wanted to research and talk about um Mm -hmm. we've reached out to a couple of people um to see if they'd be willing to come and talk to us about it um we've kind of contacted you know people in the industry we're kind of talking to we kind of got like a wide range of things that we want to talk to people about and we're going to just try different formats I guess and watch the space because it's I'm going to say it's ever evolving and we'll work it out as we go like we did yes, in this episode. yes it is. I mean in like, the first season we were the first season was truly just a test run because we were like we don't know what we're doing let's just see what happens and let's see as what we people keep like. saying I'm like blown away that we consistently get, and of course we're not like at all in the top, like whatever podcasts of all time. I mean, Dateline and I think Crime Junkie are like the top two in America all every week. Uh, oh, for yeah. sure. For sure. But we hop in and out of those top numbers. So I'm not. Yeah, but I mean, like it. also just for like two random girls who've never done a podcast before and don't know really what they're doing. One of us might know more than the other. And I'm looking at you, Nicola. Um, like I can't believe where we are already. It's kind of it's kind of fun. It's kind of cool. I know, and we're still in the top ten percent, which is good. That we've is good. Ma- we've maintained. But I, I also feel like not to take away from our work, but I also feel like everyone and their mother now has a podcast. Oh my god, for bloody sure! Like I saw just on LinkedIn this week, like three people I know have started a podcast, and I'm like, do you want to reach out? Like, do you want to talk to us about this? Because Else doesn't seem to suck. Do you want to come and talk to us? Happy to share what barely we know. Yes, the little small about we know. But like, the little the crumb that we can share. <laughs> like, okay, just be consistent. I think that's probably our biggest, our biggest like tool in our tool belt is that we are consistent. You know, we do what we say we're gonna do. Silly. And yeah. So better late than never, but we're consistent. <laughs> Um, wait, but what are their podcasts about? Well, they've been, please, on my LinkedIn. Um, we've got one about, like, kind of about toxic workplaces. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, so, interesting. I'll keep an eye on you. Yes, and then, keep an eye. And no, totally different from us, though. It's three people talking, and they don't interview a lot of people. They talk about businesses, et cetera, which I thought was quite interesting. Okay. Um, but worth listening to. I think it's cool. And yeah, then, absolutely. A couple of safety ones. Um, there was a brand new safe, two brand new safety ones that I saw come out, um, which I'm quite excited about. And I might listen to those. I think the one was the circus of safety or safety circus. And I was like, oh, girlfriend, I am so listening to this. This is right up my true crime scene. That's right up oh my God, talking about true crime. Have you been listening to the new episodes of The Lady Vanishes? With, I like, haven't. And I have to tell you, so the first season, I was so, I, maybe my expectations were too high because I was like expecting to be this something so totally crazy. And it was just kind of like more like the long game. Like it was more like drawn out. And I can't- Now like, it's going end, back to crazy town. Okay, because at the end I sort of lost interest, and I was like, okay, so because you know, now we're they were in doing, like, all the now passport we're in the, entries and stuff. Now we're in the coronial hearing, so now they're doing like the live action replays of the court stuff. Oh wow! Oh, maybe, maybe I have to. Maybe I have to listen. Please, to that one. you got to get on board with that one. Um, yeah. what else have we got? What else have we got lined up for 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 se- season two? I'm just having a look at our our guest list from season two. Mm-hmm. Um, I know that we have some interesting um, like startup people and oh, people, right? We also have, and I think this is one that we're going to really enjoy sharing with people, was the lady that had like 400 jobs and like- Oh my God. That was yeah. like her first, like right out of the gate. She was like, so I've had 400 jobs in 32 years. And we're like, what? We're like, well, who's the common denominator there? Lowest common denominator. And I think yeah. I think we said that to her as well. Where we were like, Ooh. 
yeah like at some point you have to understand like maybe you bring like like way back when we first started you know we we were very clear that we added to the toxicity at our former workplace like we weren't exempt so it's like I think everyone has a little bit of you know like I always say like your part in it so maybe you know maybe you know you know what I have noticed though is I have now noticed like toxicity coming from others because now I'm so hyper aware of toxicity in the workplace Mm -hmm. and at the moment in my workplace I'm really 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 and I can't wait to use I can't wait to talk about this as a topic later in the season but I am like fixated on weaponized incompetence like fixated on it and I see it everywhere and it is so toxic and it is driving me mental where you send someone like a word document and they're like I can't open the word document you do it for me can you send it to me in pdf it's like well then you can't review it can you please open the link we've sent you so that you can review it I don't know how to review it why is it all in red it's like so how do you, how will you handle that will you be like let's do a refresher on word documents I have been doing that where I'm like See? yeah I, here's, I, here's that's a, what would be my first like thing was be like okay you don't know how to do it maybe this is a widespread problem now everybody has to learn how to use exactly where I'm like document. okay no worries I'm happy to send you a link to learn how to do it better um it should be a pretty standard practice it's not rocket science over here but here's a link watch the video and but I'm like so fixated on it, and I'm also hyper aware of not like not perpetuating toxicity in the organization. Yeah, I've become so hyper aware of it though. Like it's everywhere now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. I mean, I think that's like that's what happens, right? Like you talk about it all the time, and then you're like, I, like, and you start spotting it easier. You spot it everywhere yeah. now. I mean, it is a rampant issue. You know, like stuff happens all the time, and people all the time. Just, relationships with people whether or not it's like familial or intimate or whatever they're hard because you know it's hard so okay so we're gonna have like so we're doing some deep dives on toxic workplaces that a lot of you probably already know but we kind of want to bring a different spin on it um for instance yeah our spin like so for instance I'm going to be doing a little thing um on we work but we're going to be putting a special spin on it um, so that it's not just the retelling of the story, which I think most people know, right? So we'll kind of give you a recap. And I think that's Nicola's intention too. We'll give you a recap of what we already know and then kind of get a little bit further, talk to some people and see what they have to say. And then we'll go from there. I know. I, as we said earlier, like, if we're using the term investigative journalism very loosely. <laughs> oh I think the biggest thing I investigate on a daily basis is how soon can I get to bed? That's what I investigate on a daily basis. <laughs> if you want a full investigative journalistic report on that, then I'm your girl. <laughs> Otherwise, don't have too high expectations. And then you'll be pleasantly surprised if we you know you know what okay hold on you know toxic workplace that I have deleted off my app like off my phone so I woke up the other morning and my twitter was a giant x and I was like oh "Oh, no oh oh it's the first time I have ever deactivated and deleted a social media account I've never gotten behind Twitter slash X. Like, I just didn't get it. I was like, this is stupid. It's like Facebook, but no pictures. But then there are pictures. And then it's like Instagram, but with pictures. And then people are retweeting. I'm like, this is just reposting on Instagram. Like, they're all kind of the same version of themselves. Okay, but think about this for a second, right? Your company has gone through a rebrand, right? How tricky is a rebrand? It's tricky. Okay, for a small company, for a multi-mega, gigantic, multi-million, bajillion dollar company, and they swapped it over in, what, two weeks? Sounds that way. I mean, you probably would know better than me because I'm not a Twitter officiant. So now, so now what are, are they no longer tweets? They're exes? What are they? I'm so confused. Well, they're definitely not tweets anymore because well, there's no gonna, little bird. I'm- Oh, I'm still going to call them tweets. How many, How much do you want to bet that everyone's going to still call it Twitter? 
Yeah, well, this is exactly it, right? Like, what right. what is the meant? Like, what was the thinking behind this? Like, is it just so that you can slap your your own image on something? But you're just creating like more and more toxicity as you go. Elon, come on, mate. And he's your people from South yeah. Africa. Oh, I no, we're not claiming that one. But I think it's too late. <laughs> no, not claiming him. That's what Shanique says too. She's mm-hmm. like, Mm-mm. he's mm-hmm. been American, Americanized. Yeah, no, no, no. He's not our people. That's not our people. <laughs> All right. Well, anyway, yeah, I see what you're saying. Like, I'm not, I was never like very in too deep with X slash Twitter slash whatever. So I don't, I never really used it. I mean, for a minute I did. And then I was like, this doesn't make any sense to my logical brain. So I'm stopping doing well, it. Well, I'm just, I'm just curious to know like what's going on behind the scenes, right? Like that branding team would have been so stressed because you've got like an established brand that has, is well known. And now this guy's like, oh, jokes, swap it all out for a black. I wig. remember one of the companies that my company worked with years ago and they did just a logo update and it took me forever to like the new logo. I was like, this is so ugly. The first one was better. Like, so that's just like, on a, like that's not even a full rebrand. They kept the same name, everything. It was just the logo that changed. And it took me like a good year and a half to get behind the new logo, right? So it's but, like, like, that's I'm just literal me. Know, once they did that brand swap, like where I woke up and it was just a black X on my phone. I'm curious to know how many people deactivated their accounts. Ooh, I think this would be a good Instagram poll. Mm. I actually think this would be a good Instagram poll too. I think maybe when we introduce season two, we can use that as a pop-up. I think because realistically, like you're losing brand loyalty, you're creating a toxic work environment because you're forcing people into potentially doing long hours to create this vision that you have but I think we already knew that Twitter before it became X was, was at my favorite word was problematic. Cause we heard all those rumblings about um, Elon Musk saying like, if you're not doing this or that, you're going to get fired. Like that's, yeah. you know, remember like, or I don't remember, there was a couple of other things, but again, I didn't pay too much attention to it because Twitter's not my jam. Maybe we, maybe we need to do an episode on Twitter. I think we might actually, now that we're just riffraffing about it, you never know. I, this might you know, be a good one. I think it could be because it's a very, I feel like it's a very hot button topic. And it is. And it's because it, it's happening as we're recording, like, whereas like we work or Lula Row or whatever, it's like people have come before us. They've done the dirty work of the true investigative journalism. You know, we're just going to be piggybacking on that because just want to let everyone know we're not investigative journalists did we oh mention God, that how fun would it be to be an investigative journalist like what like what do they do like on a day-to-day basis I don't know I think it would be a lot of work and I think at the core of who I am I'm too lazy <laughs> I, I could do it because you could I'm do it just like that you are, and I'm tenacious and motivated in certain areas but that's just again I'm going to say it again not my jam it's not your bread it's not your butter and there's no jam there's no jam being had by me wait wait you guys have this like your your biscuits (laughs) biscuits (laughs) so cute um do you guys put like cream and jam on your biscuits so when you say biscuit do you mean cookie or cracker no I'm talking about like those scone things that you have Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, it depends. Some of them are so delicious that they don't need anything, especially if you warm it, but some of them it does need a little like moisture in there. So butter, jelly, jam, anything, anything okay. goes. Yeah. Okay. I just find mm-hmm. it fascinating. You call them biscuits. It's very weird. Well, a biscuit is actually like a flaky pastry in America. It's like like a biscuit is almost like a dinner roll, but it's denser. Yeah, it's like a scone. Yeah, but a scone usually has like additional flavors, like cranberries, walnuts. No. Like it, here, no, that's, that's a muffin. What... No, scones are harder and they're triangular. No ways. Scones mm-hmm. are like round. Muffins are totally different. 
Like sometimes, like if you just get a muffin from Dunkin' Donuts, you could just eat that shit straight because it's so moist. Oh my god, I and think I need like to. A- I think I need to make you a scone so that you can have like a comparative. I don't. Scones are usually drier, and yeah, that's that. Here they are, and then muffins are something different, and then cupcakes are something different. Oh, cupcakes! Then, we all know what a cupcake is. Okay, and then a biscuit is something totally and totally different and then you have your regular like dinner rolls which are totally different so there's I love me a dinner roll look I don't love a carb like I don't naturally gravitate towards carbs are you insane if I could if I didn't get fat I would eat carbs all day every day no it's just not something I gravitate towards but I do love a hot dinner roll my god like a a little bit fresh out the oven one oof have and you ever had a king smell or- and you're just like blah, 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 blah. and it's all yeasty or like a good sourdough oh a good homemade bread I think we discussed this on season one because um our person from who had like what was the oh blue it's steel. Was, blue it was, steel was making yeah. homemade European bread and I was like that is yeah. the please give me that as a gift I will eat the yeah. shit out of that I know it's like you. I, we will be like little Hansel and Gretel. Yeah, he could crumbs. have Hansel and Gretel's our asses to any big oven with the promise of homemade artisanal homemade bread. European I'm bread. Here. Like I've got like <laughs> a. If you're baking me a fresh bread, I am all up in that carb. I oh, mean, that, even I if like, I knew you were like a serial killer, I'll be like, I can take them. I'll just get the bread, bread and run. Look at them. Oh my God. My mother once hit me with a stale, lo- like a stale baguette stuck with me forever. Oh, I'm sure. It's it a lot really harder than it probably. Yeah. Needed to be. I think it was even a sourdough. So it was like really hard. Mm-hmm. And that's like a piece of wood. Yep. Anyway, we digress. So welcome to season two. Thanks for having yes. us. Thanks for coming back. Thanks for coming back and for allowing us to figure our shit out as we go. Yeah, I feel like this is going to be our like strap line for the rest of eternity is we're just going to figure it out as we go. Yep, we sure are. I love it. I will see you next week for our very first episode. I'm going to see you tomorrow. No, you dork. Uh, Like for the season, you muppet. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, my bad. Uh, We have (laughs) other things. We have other I'm behind see you tomorrow. Yeah, I'm thing. aware I'm actually going to see you tomorrow, but we're oh. only gonna, our, our audience is going to hear from us next week. Leave me alone. Welcome back. <laughs> Welcome back. Welcome back, week. everybody. Let's hope that we're a little bit more buttoned up during the actual season than me being like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Chuckling. Oh, <my> <laughs> oh my God. Okay. I'll see you later. I'll see you tomorrow, Nicola. Everyone else will see you later. We'll see you next week, everyone else. Yeah. Amazing. Okay, love you. Bye. Goodbye. Thank you so much for joining us on this episode of Let's Break Up, Toxic Workplace Stories. If you enjoyed our candid conversations and insights, don't forget to hit that like button, follow us on social media, and subscribe to our podcast on your favorite platform.